Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Business Statistics. This is going to be our um, video for section 8.2, testing hypothesis about a population mean with an unknown population standard deviation. Okay, um, again, I'll let you guys fill in these a couple of sentences here. Um, what does it say? The main differences between hypothesis tests about the population mean uh, when the population standard deviation sigma is known and when it's unknown. Um, I mean, that kind of tells you what the main difference is. Um, so when we have a known sigma, we're using our z-test. When we have an unknown sigma, um, meaning we only have an s, we only have a sample standard deviation, that's when we're going to be using our t-test, okay? And then the formula for the test statistic to test a hypothesis about the mean when sigma is unknown is just this formula right here pull that up right here 8.2 t data or t calc is equal to x bar minus mu naught um, divided by s over the square root of n okay the procedure to find the critical value for a one-tailed and two-tailed test when sigma is unknown this thing is going to be the exact same way that we just did this all right so so that's that. So we'll work on that in these examples here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the examples. I think I'm going to put both of these examples onto one video um, just because we are making it through. Okay. All right. The Employment and Training Administrator reported that the U.S. mean unemployment insurance benefit was $238 per week. Using a sample of 100 individuals from the state of Virginia, the mean weekly unemployment insurance was 231 with a stand, with a sample standard deviation of $80. Assuming that the weekly unemployment insurance benefits are are approximately normally distributed, use a statistical hypothesis test at a 5% significance level to determine if there is sufficient statistical evidence to claim that the mean weekly unemployment insurance benefit in Virginia is below the national average. Okay? So it's like we are given the status quo of um, hey, here's the national average. Here's the national insurance benefit average of 238. All right, that's our status quo. And we're saying, okay, let's test to see if Virginia is in line with that status quo. No, let's see. Determine if there's sufficient statistical evidence to claim that the mean weekly unemployment insurance benefit in Virginia is below the national average. So this is one-tailed, right? Yes, we know that it's one-tailed because it says example three one-tailed. That's my bad. I probably should have edited that out before I distributed the document. But the way that we actually know, because it's not going to tell you that it's one-tailed on a test, is we know that we're testing in one direction, right? We're not testing um, if it differs. We're not testing if it is the same as, that sort of thing. We're saying, is this below the national average? Okay, so... <clears throat> Aside from that, there's a whole slew of things that we can pull from the problem. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're going to kind of go through our step zero um, where we just sort of list off the stuff that we know. So we have mu, which is our status quo, which is our national average, 238. Okay. Um, we have a sample size there of n individuals, n being 100 individuals from Virginia. We have an unemployment um, sample mean there of 231 from Virginia and then it says with a sample standard deviation of $80 so that's not a sigma that's an s because it tells us it's a sample standard deviation $80 and then what else we have our sigma we have our significance level of 5% given to us so that's kind of our list of info that we know we can just kind of <clears throat> you know cart that off a little bit so we go to uh, one we have H naught and H A so our first step is establishing our hypothesis. So we know that our status quo is like 238. That's that's the idea. We want to check, given the last sentence, um, the mean weekly unemployment benefit in Virginia is below the national average. Okay, so we're saying, okay, we have a suspicion that it's actually below the national average, 238. So it's below what we would generally think that it is. And then conversely, H naught is just greater than or equal to. Okay, then two, what is our significance level? What is our alpha level? 
<clears throat> and then that's great. Three is, hey, what's our test statistic? Okay, and now this differs from the last one, not because we're on a different section. I mean, I know that helps, but because we have an S here, because we don't have a sigma. So we're still about a mean, right? We're still having a hypothesis about a mean, but our S is what indicates we're going to be using a t-test. t-test about a population mean. <clears throat> and that is equal to t equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. So the exact same formula as before, except we replace the t and replace the s. Okay. And things will change, you know, where there's going to be di differing things, and you'll see that here in step four. So step four is always, let's draw our picture and establish our rejection region. Okay. So we've got this nice little picture. It's a bell curve. Um, and we want to put our rejection region in. So we go up here and we say, okay, well, where's our rejection region? We go to HA and we see that it's pointing to the left. So that means our rejection region is over here. So RR right there, fail to reject region right there. All right. How big is our rejection region? Well, our rejection region is the size of alpha, always, right? When we're two-tailed, we split alpha in half because that comprises the totality of our rejection regions. But we don't have to split alpha in half here because we have one rejection region. So our rejection region is 0.05 over here and 0.95 over here. Okay. And so that's that. So we need to figure out, okay, what is our T crit? All right. That, that's you know, the, our line in the sand that we that we cross. When you cross that, you're in the rejection region. If you fail to cross that, then you're not in the rejection region. You know, you're in the fail to reject region. So the way that we find our T values is we need a particular um, alpha level, right? We need our tail level, which is 0.05, and then our degrees of freedom. So what is our degrees of freedom? If you remember, degrees of freedom, if you remember from section 7, Degrees of freedom is always equal to n minus 1. So n is equal to 100, so our degrees of freedom is 99. So we look in our table for t of 0.05 comma 99 degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's look over here. So the probability tables, we've got to get to the t tables. So we find the column for 0.05, and we scroll down, and we want to find degrees of freedom of 99. Looks like it only goes up 48 here, so we go over here, 0.05 all the way down to 99, yes, 1.660. All right, so we have 1.660, and then our rejection rule, we would just say reject if t calc, meaning the calculated value is less than, oh, and this will be a negative number because it's to the left side, is less than um, t crit, which is equal to negative 1.660. Okay, so f step five, we go up here, step five, let's just plug in the stuff that we know, All right? So we have an x bar, so we say t calc is equal to x bar, which is 231 minus mu, which is 238, divided by S, 80, divided by square root of N, or the square root of 100, or 10. And the number that we come up with is negative 0.875, okay? And we just need to know, okay, is this negative 0.875 less than negative 1.66 and no we know that it's not it's, it's going to kind of appear somewhere like here on the you know on the table it's going to be like kind of like right there right so we say fail to reject ftr um, because t calc is greater than t crit or to say that 0.875 is greater than 1.660. Okay, and then in step seven, we then turn that into a managerial conclusion, and that is to say, <clears throat> um, what was this about insurance benefit? So we wanted to determine is the Virginia 
uh, insurance benefit less than the national average. And then we would just say, we don't have significant statistical evidence to suggest that the claim that the Virginia average is less than the national average is true, right? Or we don't have significant evidence to suggest that the Virginia uh, unemployment um, insurance benefit is lower than the national average, okay? All right, guys, um, let's move on. So that was fun. So now we're going to move on to a two-tailed test. All right, the national mean annual salary for a school administrator is 90000 A school official in the state of Ohio took a sample of 25 Ohio administrators and found a sample mean of 85272 with a sample standard deviation of 11039. Assuming that the annual salaries of school administrators is approximately normal, use a hypothesis test to determine if the mean annual administrator salary in Ohio differs from the national average. Okay, so we see a lot here. So we can just start plugging or uh, pulling things out. We get a status quo, kind of a national average of 90,000. We have a sample size of 25. We have a sample mean of 85,272. We have an S, right, the sample standard deviation of 11039. And use a hypothesis test to determine if the salary differs, differs. But it doesn't give us an alpha level. So let's just pick one. Uh, let's just go with 0.05. We're used to doing that, right? So let's do 0.05. You could also pick 0.01 if you want to. Um, that's fine. Whatever you would like to do. But if you want to follow along, use 0.05. Okay? So that's that. Um, and then let's get into step one. So we're having our H0 and our HA. Uh, we already know that it is about a mean, okay? And that mean is proposed to be 90,000, okay? All right. And then the question becomes, what are our operators here? Like, what are they? Is this less than, equal to, greater than, equal to, um, equal to, not equal to sort of thing, okay? And we can just look at this last sentence. Assuming that the annual salaries of school administrators is approximately normal, use a hypothesis test to determine if the mean annual administrator salary in Ohio differs from the national average. So it differs, so it doesn't give us a directional. So it's just going to be not equals to. That's that. So then H naught has to be equals to. So 2, sigma, again, we don't know. So we decided on 0.05. 3, is, hey, what statistical test are you using? So we're going to say t-test about a population mean. Okay, and that is equal to t x bar minus mu over s divided by square root of n. Okay, and the reason that we know that is because we're testing the mean. So we look at step one, we say we're testing the mean, and then we ask the question, do we have a sigma or do we have an s? We have an s. So we have to use the t-test, okay? So then step four is what? Step four is draw our picture, okay? And so then because this, um, so then we have to say, okay, well, where are our rejection regions? So we look at step one and we say, is this one tilde or two? We can see that because it's equals not equals. That's our only scenario where it's two tilde tests. So we know that's a two tilde test. So we know that these are rejection regions right here. Okay. And then how big are our rejection regions? Well, we have an alpha error of 0.05. So in total, our rejection regions need to be 0.05. So 0 0.025. 0 0.025. Okay, so we split that alpha in half. So then we know that we have a failed to reject region in here of 0.95. Okay. And then, yeah, this... Let me scroll down here to give myself a little bit more right in room. Okay. And then it becomes to establish our rejection region. So this is going to be our T crit negative, T crit positive. Okay. And how do we establish our T crit? Well, how big is this sliver here? So it's going to be a T value. That's T of 0.025. And then what is our degrees of freedom? n is equal to 25, so our degrees of freedom is 24. 
Okay, so this negative one is going to be the negative version of it. This positive version is going to be the positive version of it. So we really only have to look in the table for one value. Okay, so go to the table. We're going to look in the 0.025 column. 0.025 column. And then we're going to march down to n equal 24. 2.064. So we have the 2.064 right here, and then we have the negative 2.064 right here. So then we establish our rejection rules. So remember, we're just trying to establish the rule to be in the rejection region, right? So, so we reject if our t calc, meaning the, the value that we're going to get here, is greater than our t crit positive, which is happens to be equal to uh, 2.064, or, or. If our t calc is less than our t crit negative, which is negative 2.064. Okay, so that's our rule. So then in step five, we have to calculate what our actual value is. So we'll say t calc is equal to what? Well, we look at our formula from step three 85, 272 divided by 90,000. And then 11039 divided by square root of 25. And then our number ends up being negative 2.14. <clears throat> okay. So then we have to determine, well, where does that fall in terms of our rejection region? So it is just to the left of that t crit negative. So it's just in the rejection region, right? So we reject because t calc is less than t crit negative or negative 2.14 is less than negative 2.064 okay so then seven our managerial conclusion is that we do have significant evidence to suggest that the administrator salary in ohio differs from the national average okay now note something right so, so you're done with the problem like done 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 that's great but note something okay note that <clears throat> had we chose a different alpha level had we chose 0.01 okay what that would have done was given us ultimately given us a different t value right a different t critical value it would have widened that t critical value and made the burden of proof or the you know the the, the problem of proof tougher and then our t calc value would have actually fallen within the fail to reject region right so essentially we can look at this and say yeah we're we can be like we have significant evidence at the 95 percent confidence level or at the five percent significance level but we don't have significant um evidence at the one percent significance level okay now we didn't run through those numbers i just happen to know that because i ran through it on my own but um yeah well, guys, go ahead and let me know if you have questions on this. Um, I think I'm going to put out one more video here um, in regards to eight. And, yeah, that's that. All right, thanks so much, guys. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, all right.